choosing the right tree for the right place. It makes us so happy to see people interested in learning more about trees and more importantly, how to ensure their long-term survival and getting more trees into the ground. Definitely. We, um, our, our mission, one of our, a part of our mission in, in, at Tree People is to increase the canopy um, of, of, the of all of LA County. I mean, some, I believe in our mission now, it, it actually says the world. Um, but in this, in this particular uh, webinar, we are talking about LA County and, um, and we look forward to, to guiding you and encouraging you to, to uh, increase that beautiful green foliage uh, as you walk your streets, especially during this time. Okay, so you're welcome to take notes, uh, but we wanted to let you know up front that we have a variety of videos, how-to guides, uh, and and the best thing is we've we've got an LA City Street Tree list. It's got tons of information that's going to be like your 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 Bible, your go-to uh, in choosing trees. So again, uh, we have lots of resources that uh, we're going to be talking about throughout, but also that we'll be sending you afterwards. All right. So before we get started, we would love for you all to answer this question in the chat room. What do we mean by the right tree in the right place? Go ahead, feel free to write your answers in the chat room. It doesn't have to be long. Any thoughts about that? Or if you're like me, it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, trees that we want, a tree that will thrive. Where it will succeed for a lifespan. Mm. I like that one. Thank you. Yeah, Jason. Where height takes into consideration. Yeah, see, we have a lot of very smart people. Um, thank you, Nick. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Ah, Victoria. Yes. Fabulous. All right. Yeah. Well, let's let's uh -oh. let's. Uh oh, Chris, we've what? got our money cut out for us today. We've got our we've got our, our we we've got a smart group on our hands. <laughs> we do. We do. You know. Um, yep. Yeah, they'll see where we're going with all this as we cruise along. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's take a, a, a look at this a little more closely, right? So so uh, what's the goal? So our goal, as, as you've all alluded to, right? Uh, next, yes, is happy, healthy people and trees. And what does this mean? This means that we're preventing hazards for people and trees. And that when we plant trees, we want happy trees so that they can grow and provide all those fabulous ecosystem benefits, right? And unfortunately, this is not the case in a lot of places. We have a lot of trees in the wrong place, unfortunately. And most of the time it's just because there are different factors that were not considered when choosing trees for specific locations. And so to give you a better idea of what we mean by right tree, right place, we're gonna start out with some examples of the wrong tree in the wrong place. So here is an image that I, I have a feeling based on this, this piece, very smart group of humans that we've all uh, noticed or observed um, scenes like this in our in our own neighborhood streets, parks, and and schools. Actually, less in schools, but more in streets, parks, and 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 in front of our houses, which in the area we call a parkway. And we'll get into more of that in detail. But this tree. Um, so I'm guessing you can see a, a few things that are wrong with this. And what I pains me and what I love about this photo is that it, it, it actually speaks volumes. Um, the location of the tree, again, all of this, I'm going to go over this quickly and we'll go get into the details as we move into this, um, this presentation. But this tree 
is stunning more than likely. I can't see the entire tree in this in this image, but I'm guessing this tree is stunning, provides tremendous amount of shade, attracts habitat, and does all those fabulous things. However, you can see that the, the reason why it's in the wrong place is because the sidewalk's buckling. Uh, it's causing a, has a tripping hazard. It's causing a hazard for the tree. In addition to that, you might notice if you have a, a somewhat of a trained eye that it's also right been planted right next to a utility box. And so that's a that's a problem because roots want to go where there's water, right? They're going to follow that path. So not only are you going to follow that path to the utility box, they're going to follow that path to the house, they're going to follow it anywhere it, they need to go. So proper soil conditions, proper um, um, width of the parkway. There's many, many things that are needed in order to plant a particular a tree of this size. And we'll get into those details in a minute. All right, so what is wrong? Oh, what's wrong here? Actually, there is several things, right? Um, there are sticky fruit or pods that fall onto a sidewalk, maybe a tripping hazard. So if you get a tree that you're that produces pods like this carob tree, may not be a good idea. Um, this tree is too big for the space. It it has nowhere to grow. I mean, look at it. Poor thing. It's 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 right up against the sidewalk. The entire surrounding area is covered in hard surface, which is not good for roots, soil, oxygen, water, all the things that this poor needs to be. This poor tree needs to be healthy. So not a good space for it. I know it's interesting, isn't it, Chris, how how people want to the tendency is to sort of lock the tree in. It's like we're gonna <laughs> take that tree and we're gonna keep it in this space, you know? But trees need oxygen. Trees I know and, trees, and concrete things space. that go right up around yeah. it's 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 its trunk, you know, this tree needs yeah. to grow and it needs soil and it anyways. We'll get into that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's that's uh, other things to observe. Um, I um, with this image, I'd love to just observe, if you will, what what might be wrong here. Um, and as you're thinking about this, it's you might notice, wow, well, there's a lot going on here. We see shrubs. We see this flowering. Maybe it's a bougainvillea. I can't really tell from this image. And and then there's this tree. And the intention, my belief always is that people are planting trees with the most beautiful intention, right? There's never a, wrong, a bad intention, I would imagine. The problem is, is it's the wrong space, once again. So you've got this very tall, skinny tree that, that I don't know, but it might, I'm thinking they're actually having to really trim down the canopy of the tree because it doesn't fit in the space. So, so you're looking at the top, how the height of it. It's that's about a two-story building, which is about what 20, 25 feet. So you've got you've got a diameter of a tree that's probably about 20 feet. You've got the height of the tree that's about 20, 25. So it is absolutely a fabulous tree. It is absolutely planted in the wrong place. Um, and again, maybe it was planted there to to cool the building, to shade it. Uh, again. Fabulous intention, wrong place. So we'll, we'll uh, and, and it could be that when they were, you know, purchasing the tree at the nursery, it was little and it was sweet. You know, maybe it was only six feet tall. Maybe it was five feet tall, four feet tall. And the diameter of the trunk was like this, right? The caliper was like that big. Well, now it's not anymore. So again, wrong tree, right? Wrong tree, wrong place. Let's, let's remember, and we're going to say this probably a million times in this presentation, <laughs> is, to, is to really think about the tree when it's in mature, not when it's in a tiny little spot. Exactly. And, and this is another one of those, I mean, what's wrong here? It's so, this is such a classic, right? I, I drive down practically every street, you know, in, in neighborhoods and and we see this happening. These poor jacaranda trees are meant to be tall, and instead of ha and and instead, they have to they're being topped, right? And because they're under a power line, so there are options, as we'll get into, and Michelle has talked about, that can actually grow and fit under a power line, uh, just not a jacaranda. And so, to give you a better idea, if you yeah. look down the street and you see a tree you can see a full-size jacaranda as to what it wants to be and should be, right? 
it's it's a media it, a really wide tree which if there were no power lines it would be brilliant and and you would be able to have this great canopy over your sidewalk and your street but unfortunately this poor thing has to be topped and uh uh because of the power lines so again poor tree in the wrong place so what to know before choosing a tree so we can see that there is um a lot of research that we encourage you to do before choosing a tree and 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 i always i always encourage people take your time I, there's so, this odd panic sometimes when it comes to planting i hear i talk to residents on it literally on a daily basis and and what i say is it's not a race it's a marathon right so let's observe sit out on your front whatever and look at your look look see what's going on observe 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 um is it the right tree uh what should you know about the specific species and characteristics before planting that tree is it the right place what should you know about the place that the tree will live for its entire life not your life but the tree's life it's a so good when point. you move on if you choose to yeah what's gonna happen with the tree and that's often what i say to, to <laughs> say to residents is how long are you planning on staying there? You know, like, are you going to take care of this tree? So let's think about the tree first almost, and then our needs maybe second or both. Let's see how we can cohabitate with these beautiful, beautiful trees. Um, so it it seems basic, doesn't it, when we're talking about it? But but it, it, it takes some slowing down and some observation and some thought. Yeah, and definitely research, like you were saying. In fact, we're going to look at um, some of that with mm -hmm. right place. So... Uh, one of the basics to understand uh, in determining the right place is actually your climate zone. Um, and so what is the climate of where you live? Different trees do better in different climates. For example, some trees may prefer heat like here in the valley where I live, and some actually do better closer to the coast over where, where Michelle lives. And so uh, to help ensure happier trees, you have to consider their climate. It's just one of the things. And so nicely enough, Sunset Magazine came up with climate zones that take into consideration total climate, right? Including length of a growing season, timing and amount of rainfall, winter lows of our areas, summer highs, wind, humidity, all of that. So these zones will guide you in choosing the right tree for your area. Um, so for example, in looking at this, there, there's two different maps here. This one, my climate zone is 18 because I live in the, in the Inland Valley there. And um, let's see if we go to the next one. If you didn't see yours there, uh, there's, there's more, more of those climate zones here zones 22 through 24. What's your, what's yours, Michelle? I think you're 24. 24. Yeah. Closer oh. to the coast. Yeah. So again, yeah. um, we'll send you some information, uh, but it's, it's pretty, pretty easy. I, I believe it's, you know, sunset garden climate zones, but we'll send you that info, but it's great to yeah. uh, know your climate. So another thing in right place that a lot of people don't necessarily consider is your soil. Uh, healthy tree and uh, needs the right kind of soil texture. It's what we call it um, because trees prefer specific soils. So soil texture tells us how much sand, silt and clay we have in our soil. And uh, the good news is we have some information on how you can do that. Uh, to test your soil. But basically, <laughs> sand is the largest particle. These particles are round. They're about the size of like the end of a number two pencil. And you can s easily see them. Also, because uh, water passes through them quickly, um, uh, it, it's a good thing to know. Sand is Sandy soils are, uh, typically are more well-drained soils, and some trees like well-drained yeah. soils. <laughs> Um, uh, it's, it's like, as if you took a glass of, took a glass, took a glass and put ping balls, balls in it and you pour water into it, 
you'll see how fast that water moves through. Um, the next particle is silt. And I don't know if you can see, uh, it's the tiny little red dot there on the left on the screen. Silk particles are also <laughs> round, but they're much smaller. You need a microscope to see the individual particles. Um, but their, their texture, the silty soils tend to be slick and slippery when wet. And they're kind of like um, the texture of flour when they're dry. Uh, and then lastly is clay. And clay is the smallest particle size. It's so small you'd need like an electron microscope to see it. Um, but clay, unlike sand and silt, is flat, right? And so you get these, these clay particles that are flat. And so when water tries to move through that, it goes really slow because it, it takes a while for that water to move uh, in through those layers. And so, uh, as I was saying, you know, there are some trees that don't do so well in clay soils. Mm -hmm. And so now typically your soil will be a combination of all three, right? And so later this chart we're going to look at, you're going to find out if there's combinations of sand or silt or clay. Um, Another great test uh, that's pretty simple and quick is to do a soil drainage test. Again, we'll send you that, that information, but essentially you're digging a hole about the depth of a, of a shovel head and filling it with water. And depending on how fast it drains also gives you some clues as to um, the kind of tree that, you'll, uh, that you can plant. All right, that's soil. Wow, thank you, Chris. That I every time ten years we've been working together. Every time you talk about soil, there's something I hear. Oh, good. <laughs> just so, I just heard something else this time. I, I love it. I think it's a very it's um it. I'm seeing in the chat. There's actually quite a bit of discussion about soil, um, and it's a worthy conversation for sure. Uh, we certainly talk about it at Tree People all the time. It's a very, very, very. It's a topic of high interest currently that we are, no pun intended, really digging into further. And our founder, Andy Lipkiss, of course, was featured in a, a, a film called um, Dirt the Movie. Um, and it's, it's, it's just, it's a, it's a big topic and we don't, we take it very seriously. So if you have lots of questions regarding soil, please ask Chris. And, um, <laughs> no, and we're, and we, of course, we'll answer more, but as, as Chris has indicated, there'll be more information coming to you um, uh, at the end, uh, later on uh, via Emmy and team. So, um, so thank you, Chris, for that. Um, space, as I indicated earlier today, or earlier in the talk, um, space is critical. And um, it is um, it, space for roots and trunks to grow, space for branches to grow, and, 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 and place for energy conservation. So again, when you're out observing, um, we're not just, I, I talked to so many people, and, and, and it's, the complaints about a tree might be, you know, as Chris in indicated earlier, is is not necessarily where the tree is, but the type of tree that's planted, and that that gets very personal. About do you want flowers? Do you want a deciduous tree? Do you want an evergreen tree? And all that. And we'll get into that later. But but again, it's 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 ultimately the physical features of the tree will determine that space, and then you can look at the characteristics, which we're going to get to in a minute. But Space, 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 the soil and space and all the things, climate zone, everything we've, we've talked about in these first few slides. And it, again, it's all gonna come together in, in the next several slides, but um, it's, you know, you wanna ensure there's space available for the roots and trunk to grow. Again, the uh, select a tree that will not outgrow its space. It may outgrow you, but it won't outgrow its space. A healthy tree, uh, it'll get taller and wider as it grows. So for some of you that are unfamiliar with the language, we talk about that, it's, it will get into it later a little bit, but when we say the canopy, we're talking about those leaves, how far away from the trunk do the leaves expand out, right? That's the canopy uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar. And, and if it's healthy, it's gonna grow beautiful and strong. Um, so you're not gonna have the problems that a lot of trees that we experience. I see someone is talking about wheelchair access, right? On, on these parkways or these sidewalks. Yeah, let's make sure that our streets are safe and let's plant the appropriate tree in the appropriate space to do that so that the roots have room to grow underground and out versus above ground and out. Um, so space, 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 characteristics. Flowers, fruit, fall color, evergreen, deciduous. Oh, so many things Next to choose slide, from. Amy. 
Um, and we are, these are beautiful things that we get to think about, right? We get to think about how, how what, do we want that shade? I, I personally love evergreens. I came from our, my beloved county of Santa Cruz, uh, which is currently under siege with fire, uh, which is a heartbreak. Um, so I grew up with, you know, oaks and redwoods and just deep, deep, deep dark green all around me. And um, so I'm attracted to that. Um, I know Chris loves flowering trees. Um, she loves these, these. I love these this Chinese pistache. She <laughs> loves it. So again, you get to make these decisions based on the other elements that we discussed. Next slide is the right tree. Um, again, uh, you'll notice in this, um, in this photo in particular, that we're looking at a short skinny and a short wide. Um, here we have, um, when we're in this presentation, we're using the word short or wide again, we're referring to the tree's canopy. How wide does it go? The umbrella, the branches and the leaves, how far do they spread out? And the roots, just so you're thinking when you're planting a tree or looking at trees, the roots mm -hmm. If you have a tree like, you know, where the canopy is out here, that's where the drip line is. That's where the roots are going to be as well. So as the canopy extends, so does the drip line and or those roots, right? So it's going to, you've got to think about not this tree when it's like this, but the tree when it's like that. How much space do you need? Is it short and skinny, short and wide? So short and skinny can be up to 25 feet tall and 20 feet wide. Uh, which is a great uh, spot between buildings that have lots of space, not just a skinny building like we saw earlier, but lots of space. Under power lines or an accent tree in your garden, if, for, to, in, in, as an example. Um, and this is a crepe myrtle. So uh, that's a very well-known tree in many parts of LA City in particular. My park. Um, then we have short and wide. <laughs> and then we have short and wide, right? So it can be up to 25 feet tall, which is a couple stories tall. and um, But it can spread out like 40 feet wide. So the spacing of the tree is something we'll get into in a little bit as well. Um, it's a great tree for a small yard, but um, but absolutely provide more shade, which is always what I love. Um, and it could be planted in, or in a parkway that's under a power line, but again, we'll go through that in a minute. Um, always looking up, right? So when you're looking out and observing, remember to look up where are those power lines. We'll get into that in our little, in our scavenger hunt coming up. Next slide is, is right tree. Um, again, we're talking, I won't go into the details too much here, but again, medium skinny, medium wide. We're looking at 25 to 45 feet tall with a 20 foot wide canopy, or we're looking at 20 to 45 feet wide, but a 40 foot canopy. So all of these, these, these types of details are laid out in this beautiful document that Chris will share with you in a bit. When you're thinking about and, and considering what's right for your space. Next slide is tall skinny. We, we look at tall skinny trees or tall and wide trees. Again, 45 feet tall, 25 feet canopy, tall and skinny. 45 feet tall, but 45 feet wide, huge. wide canopy. Um, huge, beautiful, gorgeous. Um, and this, let's see, um, we've got a ginkgo on a maiden hair or a ginkgo on your on the left, which is this beautiful golden color. And then we've got a coast live oak on the right. So two different types of trees um, growing at different rates and providing different elements. And now we're going to, um, so I hope Ooh. that covers some of, these are really very basic um, breakdowns of how we talk to residents and and um, anybody that's interested in a tree, this is, this is sort of the language that we use um, because we don't want to overcomplicate this. We want to make this a very ex approachable thing for anybody to take on. Um, so um, this is the type of language we're using for this presentation. Yeah. So to help with choosing trees and and help you choose the right tree for your space we have this great information sheet that we created from the la city street tree approved list uh, uh, just know the list has a key at the very last page so if you don't understand all the the letters here um, there's a key and also included are 
are trees that Tree People doesn't recommend and why. It may be on the city's approved list for street trees, but, but we also have some thinking about some of them that are listed. Um, but let's, let's go through the chart and uh, look at, I've highlighted the Hong Kong orchid, the Bahania, right? Um, and so as you move to the right there, you'll see that there's a column. It's uh, the Hong Kong orchid is, is not a native. Um, the chart says that it's evergreen, which means that it will keep its leaves year round. Uh, now this is the next important one, right? This is the height and width. So the Hong Kong orchid will get 20 to 40 feet by 20 to 25. So it, it, it can, it's, it's medium, but it's, it's not as wide. Uh, this is another, the next column, you'll see spacing 20 feet is what we recommend. So for that, again, you'll wanna, we're gonna get into more details about this, but, but you'll wanna give at least 20 feet to anything like a patio or the, or the driveway. Mm -hmm. um, and then next column is climate zones. So see, this is really important. It says climate zone 19, 21, 23, and 24. So it actually isn't appropriate for where I live, which is in climate zone 18. So I shouldn't, so I shouldn't even consider it, right? Um, next column, sun. This is important too. And we don't go into a whole lot of detail, but it prefers full sun to partial shade. Right, so we don't want to plant it. It doesn't want to be in a shady location. Uh, water. Um, so we've got two different columns here. If you're in the LA Basin in the Valley, it's a medium water use plant in both those locations. There's two two columns for each, um, and so it's a medium water use plant. And so. If your goal is to have a low or very low water use yard so that you're not using as much water, Hong Kong orchid may not be your choice because it prefers a little more water. And it's also good to take note of this because say you have maybe a low water use garden of uh, natives and of you know low water use plants and you've got your medium water desiring tree one of those aren't going to aren't going to make it right one isn't going to get enough water or you're going to end up watering too much so another great thing to know uh the next column is soil so our our hong kong orchid here loves well drained soil it uh it prefer you know so if when you do your texture test and it comes up with loam sand but no clay in it you're good again well drained soil and a great thing to know uh, again, to ensure that your tree survives. Here's a big one, and we're going to talk about this later, is your parkway size. So you need to have a parkway that's four feet, at least four feet wide or more for this tree to have enough space to grow, which is, which is pretty good. It means that in most parkways, it should do fine. Um, root damage is low, another great thing for a parkway. Uh, we have another column here with allergy potential, and so it's a four out of 10, so it's fairly low. There are some trees that have um, certain textures on their leaves and whatnot that, that create more allergy potential, so this one's fairly low. Mm -hmm. We also have a column for growth, weight, growth rate um, and uh, biogenic emissions as well as some, my favorite is the, the notes section because it just gives a little more details about the tree. This one in particular is a fragrant. It has these beautiful pink flowers. They look kind of like orchids. Well, it's a Hong Kong orchid, right? Uh, and they bloom from fall to spring. Uh, it doesn't have any fruit and uh, the flowers are really cool looking too. So anyways, this is a great resource that we'll have for you. So. Even if you go to the nursery and you start to note some trees that you like, come back and check out the list. Or if I were you, I would take the list with your highlighter and start to find the things that meet what you have in your yard, your kind of soil yeah. and your climate area and whatnot. 
And then lastly, another great resource is selecttree.calpoly.edu. Uh, it's where most of the pictures came from for this, and it's another great resource where you can type in some of the, the characteristics, especially if you don't see um, a tree on this list, I would suggest going here. So a great resource for you guys. And I'm just going to say something real, Chris, real quick, Chris, if that's okay. Yeah. Super quick. Um, just also, if you have students at any, when school is back um, and you are interested in getting trees on your campuses where your students are K through 12. Um, we Tree People has also developed a list in particular with Los Angeles Unified School District based on trees that are appropriate for planting on, on various campus sites. And it looks very, very similar to this list, but it's a beautiful guide as well. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. That school. is uh, yeah. that is available on our website, and I'm going to take note and I can add it to the list to send you. Ah, thank you. Great. Yeah. Okay, so um, so now that you uh, have you know an idea of trees and you want to take uh, a look at your private property planting around your home there's some great things to consider, uh, especially if you wanna help reduce energy use around your home. And so, you know, it's important to know how both summer and winter sun affects your home, right? And so, for example, what direction is your house, um, how is it situated? You know, so for example, my house, the whole front yard faces south. And so for, for me, that means that the majority of sun, uh, I get the majority of the sun in my front yard. My backyard uh, is, is on the um, north side. And so I don't get any direct sunlight in the, in the backyard, just a little bit of overhead, right? So uh, another thing to note is where are your air conditioning units, especially if you want to try and shade those so they're not having to work as hard. So, so based on the direction that the sun travels through the day, it shines most intensely on the east, south, and west facing walls, doors, and windows of your, of your structure, right? Um, and plus it, it pretty much beats down, straight down on the roofs of homes. Uh, and so, and then temperatures reach their highest points during hot summer afternoons and energy use increases, uh, you know, and so you'll want to cool, cool your homes. And so uh, the other thing to note is during the winter, the sun, because it's lower in the sky, shines more on the south side of the homes, uh, actually creating um, more warmth and reducing energy need for heating. And so you might consider like looking at this um, diagram here, you might consider putting deciduous trees those that lose their leaves in the winter. Uh, so you can put them on the east, south, and west facing sides of your home. And, then, and so during the summer, it's shading, reducing your need for air conditioning. And then in the, in the winter time, when it loses its leave and allowing that sunlight to get through, uh, it's reducing your need to actually heat your home, right? And so, as I said, this picture came from LADWP, uh, uh, tree booklet for LA that shows large deciduous trees on the south side of the home, as well as some additional trees on the east and west side. Uh, and then also taking a look as we've been talking about the various different sizes that will be determined by the amount of space you actually have there. Michelle, you're on mute. Sorry about that. I've got airplanes going on over here, so I wanted to <laughs> quiet things a little bit. Um, thank you, Chris, very much. That was that's always so helpful to see that diagram. Um, I wanted to add that if uh, some of you may be aware that City Plants, if you're a if you are a customer of the LADWP, um, and you you may or may not be aware that you for the lifetime of a property, not the time that you've lived at the property, but for the entire lifetime of the property. Um, you can get up to seven free trees, either distributed and or you to your home, or you can get them, uh, you can come pick them up. 
and from a partner. We are a partner of, LADW, of LADWP's um, sponsored program through the mayor's office and it's called City Plants. And when you go, you, so you, again, you can get up to seven free trees, five gallon trees, and they're about shading property. And there'll be a very similar diagram that you would be entering when you're looking at what types of trees are good for your house. That is similar to the one that Chris is showing you right now. So I wanted to point that out. Uh, two things. Yeah, one, great. give it an, give us an opportunity to share that op that opportunity for you. Uh, I'm holding shade tree distributions about every three to four weeks now, uh, where you pre-assign up for them and then you come and get them from me at a, at a specified location, which is changing Um and it's all safe and COVID friendly. Um, <laughs> but again, this diagram is very, very, very helpful in when thinking about that based on the types of trees that are being offered at that time through the program. Uh, and then you would just uh, put in that we're the partner, et cetera, et cetera, that, that um, gave you that information, but uh, a fabulous, a fabulous program. Um, and very helpful with the diagram, using the diagram that Chris has described. Um, so planting in a parkway, I alluded to this. I didn't allude to it. I spoke about it pretty extensively actually already because it's a big deal. Again, observation, 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 and a ruler, right? So make sure you know your parkway size. And again, if anybody's unfamiliar with the terminology parkway, we're talking about that space that is in front of your house um, that is, that is um, from the sidewalk to the street. Right, so so what is that size? So um, uh, in some areas of Los Angeles County, it, it gets tricky because um, you have to have, in all areas actually, you have to have a seven foot space in order to um, uh, accommodate for wheelchairs. So, and I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I wasn't planning on talking about that. It just occurred to me to mention that. Uh, I can get into it into detail later privately if somebody is um, interested in knowing more. So, um, but there, the given parkway that you have, if you're not interested in cutting up concrete, um, we, you got to take that into consideration. So four feet wide or less, small tree, four to four, six, four to six feet wide, medium tree, and six feet wide for a medium and large tree. Um, I am currently working with the city of Los Angeles because we're finding that it's inequitable. Like their parkway sizes tend to be inequitable, right? The smaller parkway sizes tend to be all over, you know, East LA and South LA. The larger parkways tend to be on the West side or, or other parts of the North. So how is that equitable? How is it that, you know, how are we gonna green all of Los Angeles when we have these tiny little parkways in these areas that are, are underserved? So something Chris and I are working on and I'm working on directly with the city currently to open up that conversation. So meanwhile, use the parkway space that you have, get those trees in the ground and, um, and, uh, and we'll guide you through that process even more. Pl um, planting in a parkway, when planting in a parkway, we're going to show you a couple videos here in a second. Uh, you're going to be looking for those, those utility boxes that I referenced to earlier. You've got to plant a tree six feet away from a water meter, 10 feet from Big gas slide, meters, Amy. Uh, 10, 10 feet away from um, transit shelters, driveways and crosswalks, eight feet, fire hydrants, 10 feet, street lights, 20 feet, electrical power poles, 20 feet, alley entrances, 20 feet, intersections, 45 feet, right? You gotta be able to see as you're going out on the intersection. You can't be blocked by a tree. Um, pedestrian lights, 15 and railroad tracks, 100. So where the heck are you gonna plant a tree given all of that, right? <laughs> yes! It gets a little tricky. It gets a little tricky, but we'll show you how. Yeah. So, um, so let's to better explain. Not yet, Emmy. Uh, we, went on, <laughs> we went on a walk. Emmy's yep. so excited. We went on a walk and um, um, we went on a little bit of a scavenger hunt, Chris and I, the other day, in the scorching heat of Reseda. And I think it was 100 degrees that day, which is it was probably hot. nothing compared to some people. It was, it was a sweaty day, but, be, but a great example. And we're excited to show you what we found. Yeah, so on our walk, our scavenger hunt, we want to see what tree, what streets actually need trees. So uh, we started out, go ahead and click, Emmy. Oh. Here we go. So we're looking down and we look down this street. Oh, beautiful. Lots of tall, beautiful Canary Island pines. That tree's great. 
can see there's plenty of trees here. And then we turn and we go, oh, check out this tree. This street had lots of parkway space with no trees. Definitely could use some trees, right? And so um, that's where we focused on next. All right. And uh, we'll go ahead. Um, and so I'm so sorry. I was I was I was off. A, off a. So you're going to be. Um, so here we're now we're looking at some of the things that we were just talking about, right? How do you map out the location? How do you find something? So let's go ahead. Whoops. I'm going to do something here. Um, and here I am. I'm walking along the sidewalk and I'm pointing out where trees can go and not go based on what we just learned about, about spacing. So right now I'm, I'm pointing out um, water meter and here I am walking, I'm pacing. I was actually counting my steps uh, and I'm walking. And here I notice based on the power lines above and the tree next to me, I can actually plant a tree right here. However, I need to be conscious about the fact that I wanna plant a tree I want to plant a small tree. Now I'm talking about I can't get too close to the driveway. So when I was and there was a water meter there as well. So these are little tiny things that sometimes aren't always easy to see. And power poles can't pet, plant next to that. We got a power pole. We have a driveway. And now we're moving down to an area where there is more space. While it is covered by some tall grasses, I am looking at an area where I can plant a tree. Nope, I can't. I must have seen a uh, utility box right there. So I'm so now I'm pacing my steps out, and I can and I've paced away the appropriate steps. I'm looking up. I'm looking to my side. I'm looking over, and yes, I can plant a tree right there. So there's a lot of spacing that has to happen. One of the things that I was going to say earlier is that you always want to look across from where the tree is about to go because you don't want your trees canopies to collide. Well, we do, and we do, but we don't. <laughs> we really want that, but it's really not great for the trees. So I'm, I'm showing more areas where um, it's not a good idea to plant a tree. I, I want to say uh, quickly um, that it's always a great spot to plant a tree, right? Oh, looks like maybe there's a power line. Excuse me, I can't see this very well. But you'll see it's if I'm saying like this, that means no, it's a meter. Thank you. I'm, I, it's difficult for me to see. Um, looks like that's a good spot to plant. I can plant a big tree overhead. One of the things I wanted to say in, in a couple of those images is that you do want to look to see the tree behind you. So if you're looking at planting a tree in a parkway, what's behind you? What tree's behind you? Sometimes that tree is already at maturity. And if that tree's at maturity, go ahead and plant a large tree because by the time your tree becomes mature, that tree will probably have perished. Um, so there's a good I, there's a good chance depending on the species. In, the, in that case, I think I saw a palm tree. It's really a grass. A palm is actually a grass, not a tree, as some of you may um, may be aware. Um, so so there are little tiny intricacies that you want to look for when when doing that as well. Quickly, let's talk about dig alert. Dig alert is something that you will get into later on. Um, you might when you're walking your neighborhood, you sometimes are wondering what the heck are all these notifications on the on the on the in the asphalt on the street that's something called dig alert and that indicates different types of um utilities so uh, chris will be providing for you later on um a link and a chart that is beautiful dig alert has really updated their website quite a bit and it it will show you all the different colors that correspond with the notifications that you will see uh, on the street. And those notifications will be there to tell you whether you can plant a tree or not. So if it's water, it's usually blue, and you're gonna follow that line and it'll go straight into your property. You can see, oh, not a good idea to plant a, plant a tree. If it's yellow, if it's whatever the color is. Now, sometimes your street may not show indicate that because nothing has been done on your street in a while. If there's no construction, if there aren't any current tree planting projects going on, you're not gonna see these indicators. You won't see these indicators show up until we have guided you through the process of getting a tree in your parkway through until you've gotten the permission to get that tree in your parkway. Dig alert then comes out and will show us what is actually under the ground. Bit of a complicated process, but we will walk you through that. Let's 
SoCal Edison. Excellent. Great. Thank you, Emmy. All right. All right. Oh, hold on two seconds. <laughs> Let me cue this up. Um, so based on all that you've learned, I know we, we're, we're running out of time, so we're going to go through this quickly. But based on all you have learned, uh, just have a look. This is this is wrong tree, wrong place. As we were there, we're like, ah, look what we found. And so I want you to take a look. So go ahead and and uh, and click this and, you know, stop sign, water meter, hmm, tree. We come around the corner, right here on the corner, there's a jacaranda, which we all have learned is a, is a pretty good sized tree and come around. Oh, look, there's a light pole. And we look up top, poor, the top of the light pole is, is sticking out and they've had to hack at the tree to ensure the light pole. And then they planted a, a crate myrtle right there next to the power line in the tiniest little space. So anyways, we, we see it all over. It, this was just like seeing all of it right there at once. Um, all right. That was, that was a crazy, crazy op opportunity. And yeah. then uh, next slide is uh, another example of wrong tree, wrong place. Or yeah, wrong tree, right place, excuse me. Again, quickly, uh, somebody decided, we're not sure what the thinking was behind this, but to plant a beautiful ginkgo right next to not only their driveway, but a mailbox and there's some utilities there as well. The slide on the right or the image on the right shows that there's a much greater opportunity for that tree to be planted and survive uh, when it's in the right place. Again, blatant example of uh, interesting decision making. Uh, it may have to do with um, them not wanting leaves to drop on their car. I, I'm not really sure. It's the only thing I can really think of. But it, in, in the long run, it, it is not a good place for, for their property as it will break up the sidewalk potentially, go into those utilities. And as well, um, uh, it's not healthy for the tree. So in the next slide, thanks for that, Michelle. Um, yeah. On, on this street, we mapped out the potential for 10 to 13 more trees. Uh, we just walked along. We, uh, the big circle with the dot indicates a tree that already exists and the X, and we took note whether it could have one large tree, maybe two mediums, one small. Um, imagine the street with mature trees, right? The change in the temperature, the look of the street, and more. What what we determine is this street needs trees and a tree people train community forestry leader. Right, Michelle? <laughs> so, That's right. So what we are queuing up is in the next slide is that um, Michelle and I are working on what used to be our citizen forester training or is now our community forestry leader training. And, and we're looking at creating um, uh, it's it'll be a four one and a half hour long zoom sessions pr probably four Wednesdays in a row um, that would be in the evenings probably around six o'clock or so after school and work are done we want it to be a fun community oriented uh, we'll probably start um, the last the last Wednesday in September um, but really what we're does what we're going to work to do is teach you how to build support for trees within your neighborhood, get the necessary um, uh, permissions, um, how to organize your, your neighborhood, how to actually provide an event. We'll talk a lot about what that may look like during COVID, uh, and then how to continue that by providing care over time until that tree gets established, because you're not gonna get that beautiful canopy uh, unless you care for those trees and and put them in the right tree uh, for the right place. So we're very we're gonna, excited about our, our yes, community forester training. That's right. And so uh, good luck with your planting efforts. We hope that you've learned something today. Uh, we'll be sending you lots of resources. Um, but I think we have a little a little time to take some questions.
Yeah, we have a couple questions. Thank you, Michelle and Chris, for all the information. Super informative, even for me, and I'm sure other tree people as well. So the first question we have here in the chat is from Jessica. Isn't there a fear of the tree falling during storms uh, slash winds? How safe are these trees? This must be a common question. Do you no, want no, to no, go for it, Michelle? Thoughts? OK, you know, I it's. Is there a fear? I think the fear, there's a greater fear of the, of, of it, of, of, you know, where we live being hot, where we're living being, being unhealthy, where we're living not attracting habitat, where we're living not being a, a, a healthy, happy place for us, a place to capture water. Um, I think that for tree people, if I were to speak on behalf of our organization, the benefits of trees outweighs the fear of trees. Um, and that's because we put a lot of time and energy into really training on the healthy, on how to keep a, a tree as healthy as you can. That's why we also really um, encourage folks to not plant trees that are hazardous to this native, in, to this environment. So that would be a non, more like a non-native tree. So a palm, like a grass, a palm tree, which we, which is technically a grass, those things go up in flames, right? They are top heavy and they sway. We're looking at eucalyptus. We do not because the eucalyptus are hazardous in terms of they, they can, in, in this area, they can get very hot. They can catch on fire. They can sway. They can outgrow the space that they are in um, quite a bit. So again, it's, it's right tree, right place. And with tree people, we do encourage uh, uh, native climate appropriate trees. And that tends to mitigate the problems of trees um, causing problems. Awesome. But we're very pro tree given, you know, our, the name of our organization. So I would, <laughs> we're, yeah. not too, we're not too focused on the hazards because we do everything we can to make sure they're not hazardous. But it's a great question. And I'm sure it's on the minds of many. Awesome. Next question is from Peter. Are any municipalities in the LA area considering adoption of minimum soil volume requirements like San Diego and Emeryville? I don't have an answer to that question. Yeah, don't know. All right. What yeah. we do, what we do, and this is from Peter? Yes. Is that from Peter? I mean, yeah, I was noticing Peter, you're, you're, you're uh, making some great comments on the chat. Um, I, um, I'm trying to read all of them as we are going, but, um, it is, um, uh, right now what we're, what the city of LA and the, and I, I can speak for the city of Los Angeles and it's, and it's really about the debt. I think if I'm uh, approaching your question, the main mandate is make sure you have enough space for the tree. So if, you know, make sure you have enough width around the root ball, make sure you have enough depth. Um, that's the mandate in terms of bringing in extra soil. If I'm understanding your question, I'm so sorry. I may not be. Um, it's the focus is on on location, depth, and and space around it. Awesome. So next question is um, ties to wildfires for trees provided via LADWP. Considering climate change. Is there consideration given to rising temperatures and protection against wildfires? Yeah, so we are looking at what we like to call, rather than um, we like to, you know, what what's climate appropriate? Given that we are climate, the climate will constantly be changing. What's what's climate appropriate? So yes, they are looking. They're they're constantly reevaluating their tree list. Um, to, in order to incorporate climate appropriate trees, pest resilient trees, um, and, and mostly those with an emphasis on native trees. That's where the list is. I believe that is true for all of LA County as well. Um, what I, your question is twofold in that a lot of the work we do is with LA City when, um, and their tree species. And so we don't have problems with necessarily, that, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna retract that statement. Um, 
So that's how they're they're looking at that issue. They're look constantly reevaluating the mayor's office again, which I whom I work very closely with is constantly reevaluating that list with the Department of Sanitation, the Department of uh, LADWP. All of the municipalities are constantly reevaluating that list in order to do the best they can to ensure that the trees that are being planted are climate appropriate and 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 mostly um, and predominantly native to the extent that they can. All right, well, to respect everybody's time, we have one last question, good timing. And of course, all the resources that we referenced here will be sent to you, including the list of the distance uh, that the trees have to be from, from different things. So we'll, we'll send that to you. So last question is, how can I plant Chinese elm trees? I lost my 60 year old Chinese elm in a storm in March. I also have a sloping yard. Would you like to take this one, Chris? I'm trying to think. Uh, you lost your Chinese elm. I'm sorry, Emmy. I was writing down to <laughs> lost my 60 year old Chinese elm tree in a storm in March. I also wow. have a sloping yard. I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah. It's 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 so hard to lose to lose a, a long a long term tree and especially in a storm. You know, I've got I've got an old ash tree in my yard that is coming to the end of its life and whatnot. I, I'm i not sure that I can answer this question appropriately other than the fact that um, I would, I would again, everything we've talked about looking at the space, uh, I'm not, um, I'm not sure about the slope, but again, that, that uh, the Cal Poly site that we have there would be helpful to look at because I think it has more details than my list but I would take a look at all those factors that we talked about, see which trees make best sense for you, uh, double check the, the website and, and then make a choice. Um, I personally don't know uh, what trees are better on slopes, just that if you're gonna plant them, you're gonna need to create a large enough shelf in there um, to again, accommodate it at its mature size. So. Uh, that may require talking to a, uh, a professional engineer, landscape architect. Awesome. Well, yeah, we and I want to just add, I just want to add really quick, I, I, I see the time and I'm going to just say this, um, is that your, part of your question, Daniel, is how close can I plant Chinese elm trees? Because mm. of the canopy, because of the canopy at mature, at when, it, when the tree is mature, you want to give those trees, especially an elm, some space. So Ideally, what the city recommends is that you give them, you plant them 40 to 45 feet apart. Um, and so, and when they're little, that's a really hard pill to swallow, right? You're seeing all these gorgeous trees that are just so spread apart, but you have to remember what they're gonna look like when they're bigger. It's up to you to decide, given that, how close you wanna plant them. But again, always think about the canopy and think about the, the city does sometimes allow, but again, this is, sounds like it's private property, um, a canopy overlay of about 10 feet. Um, so if you wanna say like 30 to 35 feet, I'm sure you're gonna be fine given given the large, how large your property is, but just keep that in mind. What does the tree look like when it's mature? Yeah. It will dictate Thank how you, close Michelle. you should technically plant those trees, yeah. All right. Well, thank you all, and we and we're going to send you info about our uh, upcoming training. Hopefully, we'll get to see some of you there. Hopefully, what you've learned today, you'll go out and map your your neighborhood yes. and see how many trees you can plant. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, so much. Mm -hmm. um, feel free to thank you in an email if you have further questions. Um, in two weeks, we'll have our next learn at home topic, and it's going to be on soil and. We're gonna have a super exciting live lesson by a, a professor, associate professor on the impacts of climate change on soil. So it's gonna be really interesting. Thank you, Michelle and Chris for your- Oh, it's been our pleasure. And knowledge, like I learned so much. I'm sure everybody else learned so much. And um, yeah, have a great Bye, rest everyone. of your Thursday. And All right. Thank you, Emmy. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this time with us. Bye. Bye.